Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Now Decadence with another video. So in this video I'm going to be using some Builder Gel in a Bottle. This is from SBD London. I'm going to be using the Jelly Purple as I just showed you. Now this is a sample bottle like I mentioned on screen there. Uh, I tested these out a while back when uh, Louise was thinking of getting these in and so yeah I've got a sample bottle but if you order it will come in in the normal bottles kind of thing so just to make that clear that is only a sample bottle it is not the bottle that you will receive should you decide to purchase anywho so these I'm not using too many things in this video so we've got the the, the builder in a bottle we've got the rubber base we've got the top coat all that jazz and all the Fimo and some caviar beads different sized caviar beads so it's technically simple just a fun summer type set of nails I just thought grape soda I, I don't know why I thought of it I got had the little Fimo pieces the grape pieces and then I thought oh what if I made grape soda what how would I make the bubbles and then I thought of the clear caviar beads and I thought oh wonder if it will work so um, I decided to give it a go and this is this is what I did the first thing I do obviously is prep the nails apply the tips and apply the base coat as you can see so once that is done then we can move on so cure that for 60 seconds and now I will use the purple jelly builder in a bottle apply a base of that down just thin at this point we're, we're going thin at this point because we're going to be encapsulating all those Fimo and, and caviar so caviar beads so we, we don't want this layer to be thick at this point definitely not because it all needs to be encapsulated so try and keep it thin it's just a bit of a background colour and gives you something to stick the Fimo pieces into. Don't worry if it looks a bit patchy or anything because we are, it's literally just something to stick the Fimo and caviar beads into. It doesn't have to be an even coverage of colour right now. We can do that with the encapsulating. That's when we will build the strength and structure as well, of course. A thin layer. Try and get that cuticle area nice and neat. Now, don't forget, Builder in a Bottle is a very thick gel. So, it's easy to apply too much in one go. So, don't put too much on your brush when you're doing that base layer. And now, I will add the Fimo grapes. I've cut some of them in half. To just fit onto smaller areas of the nail see like that one I did put on by the um, what's it called the natural free edge and then I put another half one down on the tip of the nail just for a little yeah you know, it fills in little gaps and just gives a bit of variety now I've got different shades of purple on these grape Fimo because I've got fruit Fimo's from different places and not all of them are the same so I thought you know what I'll use a few from all the different shades and sizes that I've got just to you know spice it up a bit why not so I've got these these Fimo pieces uh, not Fimo these caviar beads they're bigger than the normal caviar beads and they, they kind of look like iridescent bubbles they're really cute so I'm using them and then I'm using the, the smaller teeny weeny caviar beads because you know bubbles come in different sizes you know that was my thought process anyway I'm not sure if it made sen makes sense to you guys but when I'm thinking of a fizzy drink I'm thinking of bubbles and I'm thinking bubbles are different sizes and that, that that's where I was going with it <laughs> this isn't um it's not rocket science but I just thought it'd be something fun 
I'm doing these square curved nails again. I'm, I'm not entirely happy with the shaping at the end though, I will say that. I think I should have filed them in a little bit more. Yeah, I think they're a little bit wide in my opinion, but once I was finished and top coated, I didn't want to then have to file off the top coat and, and then file the sides and start again kind of thing. I just didn't have it in me. It wasn't a good. It wasn't a good day, um, pain-wise for me. So I didn't want to put myself through that. So I left it as it was. But if I, the uh, what's the word? Ah, oh, I'm I'm really struggling with my words at the moment. Looking back, if I was feeling okay, I would have preferred to have tapered in the sides just a smidge so that they're still square, but not quite as wide as they turned out if that makes sense so all i'm going to do is fill up each nail with the fimo and the caviar beads because each nail is exactly the same well it's not exactly the same because obviously i'm putting different great pieces and, and caviar beads slightly different places on each nail but you know you get the gist it's it's all pretty much Fimo pieces and caviar beads on all of them nails so nothing nothing difficult per se and once I've got all of the bits and bobs where I would like them to go I will indeed flash cure them in place to stop them from moving so that I can then encapsulate them I think they turned out in it apart from the shaping that like I said like I said I wasn't happy with I think they turned out pretty cute I'm thinking maybe doing a lime aid or a lemonade set with no obviously yellow or green and some lime or lemon slices with the caviar beads to be the bubbles. I think they'd look pretty cute too. So you could try this with all different fruits and colours. That would be so cool. You could do one or different one on each finger different color oh that would be nice wouldn't it oh there's an idea if anyone tries that let me know if I don't get around to doing it <laughs> let me know how it turns out I'm curious I think it would be pretty cool anywho now that I have cured flash cured those Fimo and caviar beads in place i'm going to encapsulate now my bottle of jelly builder in a bottle is at its end there's only enough just about for, for me to do this set with um like i said i i tested it out for louise a while back so it wasn't a full bottle to start with so you i will have to um well, not fight with it, but kind of, <laughs> to get the rest out. I'm going to switch to another brush later on as I go, because obviously when you're getting to the end of a bottle, it gets a bit more tricky to get it out of the bottle, because <laughs> it's in a bottle. How many times can I say bottle? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, yeah, gets a bit tricky to get it out. So switch to a different brush and it just makes it a little bit easier to scoop out the gel rather than just using the brush that comes with the bottle but whilst i can I, that is exactly what i'll use now as you saw i put some on and then flash cured that in place you also want to do that with um, clients uh, you want to avoid, avoid heat spikes as much as possible so don't apply it too thick in one go break it down and do it in parts so that you're not putting too much gel on and which can possibly cause a heat spike it depends on your lamp and how thick you apply it and also how sensitive your clients nail beds are but I wouldn't risk it on a normal person, normal person, on a usual, no, what is the word, on a human person, oh my goodness, Karen, wow, yeah, I'm on morphine again, I'm pretty sure you guys have guessed that already, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't risk that on a human to apply it thick and 
um, potentially get a heat spike. So even though I'm working on hand dolly, I was still apply in layers so as not to cause a heat spike and to ensure that it is cured all the way through and it, I mean it the light should penetrate it quite well because it is a jelly gel so there shouldn't be any problem with the light penetrating it but I also don't want it to run so that is also something I'm thinking about with my flash curing to secure it in place so that it doesn't you know run off anywhere that I don't want it to go so that first layer I'm just trying to get in all the little crevices with with the gel and then I'll get a bigger dollop of it and apply it around see I'm just trying to fill in some of those areas where it's quite gappy and sort of get around that femur and get underneath it because some of the femur is lifted off a bit it's not because they're not flat um femur are flat and the nails are not flat so instead of trying to curve the femur i've just put them on the nail flat but that means there are sometimes some gaps in between the nail and the femur so that's why i was using the brush to sort of get around those bits that are sticking up to get some of the gel underneath it to secure it so i wouldn't have an air pocket i hope that makes sense and then i'm just using this uh, SPD London detailer brush which also helps me to get around that cuticle area nice and neatly and again it gets into those little crevices that are, are a little bit trickier to get to with the brush uh, that comes with the bottle when you've got little detailed areas that you just little crevices that you need to get into a detailer brush is very handy for those things so use your tools all of them all the tools make your life easier so flash cure that in place again and then on to the little finger. So again I'll get a layer on and just try and get it into all the little nooks and crannies and if there are any that I can't get to with the brush I will use the detailer to help me along. Now you can see I was tucking behind that Fimo there, getting that gel right behind it because we want we don't want an air pocket. We've got, we've got our little bubbles already in there, so we don't want any air pockets. No need for that. No, not, don't want to ruin the design or cause a weak point. Not that Dolly's going to be doing anything, but you know what I mean. We're pretending she's real. And, and this is how I would do it on a real person. I'd make sure that it was totally encapsulated and underneath the Fimo if they're sticking up to make sure it's well and truly secured. And then I can go over the nail and just get my apex built up and all of that after I've done those layers that needed to be securing the Fimo. See, so now I'll get some more of the gel and I'll make sure everything is encapsulated and that my apex is in the back third and that the nail has enough gel on it to give it the strength it needs but like I said to also encapsulate that Fimo properly and that there are no dips in the nail because the Fimo can give you an uneven surface you do want to make sure that if there are any dips that they they're, they're filled in so that when you're filing after you finish filing you don't want there to still be any dips in the nail that wouldn't be good definitely not so yeah I would just faff around and fill in any of the areas that are a bit low there we go use my detailer brush to help me and flash cure it and I will keep flash curing because I don't want any where I, I you know I'm being strategic with where I'm placing the gel so I don't want it to slide anywhere before whilst I'm doing another nail so that's why I flash cure a lot you guys you should be used to it by now you've seen a few of my gel type videos I do flash cure often yeah filling in those areas on that nail and oh look I'm, I'm being daring I'm going to the, th uh, f the third nail as well but then you see I go back to the other nails to put the gel back where it should be because it does move gel does move if it's not a super thick one it is it's going to move so do make sure that it is where you want it to go 
and you can see how it uneven it looks it does look a bit lumpy bumpy not gonna lie it does look a bit lumpy bumpy but the beauty with gel is that it it is easy to file and I'm not that worried I know that I can file for these smooth and they will they will look nice especially you know from apex wise like I said I wasn't happy with the shape of them sidewall wise but apex wise and body of the nail yeah I get them nice and smooth so I filed and shaped off camera sorry my frosty filing freaks no filing in this one like I said I wasn't having a good day that day so I didn't bother filing the uh, filming the filing so I've removed all the dust and now I am going over with a lint free wipe and some rubbing alcohol to remove any of the dust that's left over from brushing them and now it's time to top it off and keep it tough the best part so as these are clear nails I will be top coating underneath so I will do that first and then I will top coat the surface and as we are very close to the end of the video I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel and watching this video spending some of your most precious time with me I appreciate you thank you ever so much if you have not done so already please go ahead and click that subscribe button I'd love you to join the frosty fam they are awesome if you have enjoyed this video in any way shape or form or it has helped you in any way please go ahead and click that like button it helps my channel out and I'd appreciate it ever so much and if you are feeling to up to it you are most welcome to leave me a comment I'm happy to talk to you there is some video footage and photos at the end but that's all I've got for this time you take care now peeps and I'll speak to you all again very soon bye for now